This video describes the pericapsular nerve group or ping block, an ultrasound guided technique for periarticular analgesia of the hip joint and pelvis. The ping block is an ultrasound guided pericapsular injection around the hip joint that was first described in 2018, based on insights from an anatomical study published the same year. There are three important bony landmarks, the anterior superior iliac spine, the anterior inferior iliac spine, and the iliopubic eminence. The hip joint capsule is located between the anterior inferior iliac spine and the iliopubic eminence. There are three main nerves that give off articular branches to the anterior hip capsule, the femoral nerve, obturator nerve, and accessory obturator nerve. The femoral nerve gives off these high branches which descend over the iliopubic ramus between the anterior inferior iliac spine and the iliopubic eminence, as you can see here. The obturator nerve descends in the pelvis medial to the psoas muscle and emerges through the obturator foramen. High articular branches arise from the obturator nerve within the obturator canal and low branches arise distal to the nerve's exit and its division into anterior and posterior divisions. These articular branches reflect laterally to innervate the anterior medial hip joint capsule. The third nerve is the accessory obturator nerve, which similarly descends along the medial side of the psoas muscle, but runs more superficially to cross the iliopubic ramus close to the iliopubic eminence. When performing this block, a linear transducer is suitable in slim patients, but a curved transducer is recommended where depth to the target structure, the iliopubic ramus, is more than four centimeters. The curved transducer also provides a wider field of view, allowing easier recognition of anatomical landmarks. An 80 millimeter needle is recommended to ensure adequate length to reach the target. 20 milliliters of injectate is sufficient in all adults, and as this is an analgesic block, I generally use 0.25% bupivacaine with added epinephrine to reduce systemic absorption and the risk of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. 0.5% ropivacaine is an alternative, but again I recommend the addition of epinephrine to reduce systemic absorption. The scanning phase of the technique that I'm about to describe is different from what was originally described. I find it a simpler and easier approach to use. With the patient in the supine position, start by placing the probe in an oblique orientation over the area of the femoral artery so that it is roughly parallel to the iliopubic ramus. The inguinal ligament is a useful guide as to the obliquity of the probe. It should be parallel to the inguinal ligament. Identify the femoral artery, the iliopsoas muscle, and lying on iliopsoas under fascia iliaca, the femoral nerve. Increase the depth as needed to visualize the hyperechoic line of the underlying bone. If this line has a curved appearance, it represents the femoral head in the hip joint. If this is seen, slide the probe in a cranial direction. The curved line of the hip joint will transition into a flat line that represents the iliopubic ramus. The anterior inferior iliac spine is often seen as a prominence at the lateral end. The iliopubic eminence lies at the medial end, but with a linear probe, it is often not possible to see both in the same view. Again, ensure that you have identified the femoral nerve so that it can be avoided during needle insertion. Plan a safe needle trajectory from lateral to medial that will land on the iliopubic ramus under the femoral artery and just lateral to the psoas tendon. Local anesthetic should spread under the muscle in the medial direction, lifting it up off the bone. This video illustrates the block using a linear probe. The probe is placed over the femoral artery in the oblique orientation described earlier. The femoral nerve is visible lateral to it, and deep to that, the line of the femoral head. The 
probe is slid cranially to lie over the iliopubic ramus. The needle is then advanced from lateral to medial to contact the bony surface of the iliopubic ramus. Injection in the correct plane lifts the muscle off the bone. As local anesthetic is injected, it should start to track medially. This second video illustrates the block in a larger patient with a curved probe. The iliopubic ramus and the AIIS are visible, as are the femoral artery and nerve. The needle is inserted from lateral to medial, again to contact the bone of the iliopubic ramus. Injection here should produce a lifting pattern of local anesthetic spread. As local anesthetic is injected, the probe should be moved to scan the area as needed to assess adequacy of spread. This slide illustrates the extent of injectate spread obtained with 20 milliliters versus 10 milliliters in a cadaver model. As can be seen, 20 milliliters will reach all the primary branches supplying the anterior hip capsule and iliopubic ramus. Here are some clinical pearls to finish. As mentioned, a curved probe is helpful in larger patients. Note that the pain block does not provide coverage or analgesia for surgical incisions through skin or muscle in hip fracture surgery, and thus other blocks should be considered for the post-operative period. In general, the pain block avoids femoral nerve blockade and quadriceps weakness, but there is one report to date in the literature, so vigilance should be maintained. Be aware of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, which is medial and inferior to the ASIS, and could potentially lie close to the needle insertion site if this is made too lateral to the probe.